Okay. Before we call the meeting to order, I'm going to ask Kathy O'Connor to read uh, some instructions for our first teleconference uh, meeting for the Economic Development Trust. So, Kathy. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for joining us via phone. We have a few announcements to make regarding how this teleconference meeting will work. First, I would ask everyone on the line to please mute your phone to eliminate any background noise. Trustees, manager, secretary, or municipal counselor, please only unmute as necessary to indicate that you would like to be recognized for comment. All other participants and staff are to remain on mute until recognized by the chairman or the general manager. If the teleconference is discontinued at any time during the meeting, the meeting shall be stopped and reconvened once the audio connection is restored. If communication is unable to be restored within 30 minutes, items remaining for consideration will be moved to the next regularly scheduled trust meeting on April 28th at 3 p.m. via teleconference. Number three, anyone wishing to speak about an item or to be included in the citizens to be heard portion at the end of the meeting should call 405-297-2245. Please submit your request now to avoid receipt of your request after the item has been considered. Number four, the agenda and attachments are available at our website, okc.gov. We have three presentations on the agenda today. I would ask each presenter to prompt participants to turn the page as they move through slides and pages. With that, I will turn it back over to Francis, the secretary, who will take roll. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Chairman McAtee. Present. Vice Chairman Hooper. Present. Jim Ross. Present. Todd Stone, Lynn Pickens. Okay, Mr. Chair, you have uh, three members present and that's quorum to do business. Thank you, ma'am. Let's first item on business is to approve the minutes of the February 26, 2020 Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust meeting. Move the item. Second. We have a motion to second. Is there any comments or discussion or questions? Hearing none, Madam Secretary, would you call the roll? Yes, Chairman McAtee. Yes. Vice Chairman Hooper. Yes. Jim Ross. Yes. Todd Stone. Aye. Okay, and uh, let it be noted that Lynn Pickens will not be in attendance for this meeting. Thank you, ma'am. That being done, let's go for items needing individual consideration. And the first, Kathy, if you would read it, the grant of Mr. a quick claim deed. Mr. Chair, uh, can we ratify the claims? Thank you very much. Let's take a motion to ratify the claims before we move on. I'll move their approval as submitted. Second. Madam Secretary, if you'd call the roll. Chairman McAtee. Yes. Vice Chairman Hooper. Yes. Jim Ross. Yes. Todd Stone. Aye. Okay, it passes unanimously thank you unanimous passage now let's move on to the quick claim deeds claim deeds. Kathy. okay item a is a quick claim deed to the central oklahoma transportation and parking authority for property located at southwest fourth and broadway avenue um, this property was acquired from og e for the construction of a parking garage 
uh, to help support the convention center and the convention center hotel, the arena, and Scissor Tail Park developments. Um, the property was divided into two parcels last December, one where the parking garage will be located, the other will be a mixed-use development, of largely residential. Um, and now it's time to convey that property to Kotva. They are the construction of the parking garage is now underway. You've heard the quick claim deed property. What's the desires of the trustees? I don't have any questions, but I'm happy to move the item as presented. We have second. a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? There's a typo on Hearing Chickasaw none? Avenue on the flat. <laughs> Please uh, cast your votes or call the roll. Chairman McAtee? Yes. Vice Chairman Hooper? Yes. Jim Ross? Aye. Todd Stone? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Next on our agenda is a joint resolution between the City of Oklahoma City and the Oklahoma City Economic Development Trust approving an allocation not to exceed $5,500,000. Uh, Kathy, if you would uh, outline that for us, we'd sure appreciate it. Sure. Um, the item on your agenda today is a, is a joint resolution with the Oklahoma City Council to approve a small business continuity program. Um, the, I, as, the, as the councilman mentioned, the item allocates $5.5 million from the general obligation limited tax bond authorization that was approved by the voters in 2017 for economic development. The program is designed to help small businesses in Oklahoma City retain employees and, and help them to make it through the, um, the impact of the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Um, in order to qualify for this program, businesses must demonstrate a significant drop in revenues since the beginning of the, the proclamation uh, by the city. Um, they need to demonstrate a 50% drop year over year in business or sales uh, since March 16, 2020. They also need to receive a majority of their revenue from on location sales. And that can be the sales of goods or it can be the sales of services. Um, a priority will be given to businesses that have located, that have operated within the city limits for at least one year. And to the fullest extent possible, we would like to allocate 25% of these funds to businesses that are located in low to moderate income census tracts. So the program has four components. The first one is uh, designed for businesses that have fewer than 15 employees. It is a small business incentive program uh, where a cash incentive would pay up to $10,000 for the reimbursement of payroll expenses for retained employees. Again, businesses have to have fewer than 15 employees in order to qualify. The next program are um, is a series of small business loans. These loans are um, designed for businesses up to 50 employees. The first part of the first program is a no interest forgivable loan in the amount of up to $50,000. Um, qualifying employee, the qualifying businesses would um, have to have less than 50 employees and the loan could be forgiven over time. The second loan program is a low interest loan where we would provide a 2% interest rate on a 10-year loan for um, amounts up to $100,000 for qualifying businesses. And finally, the last part of the program is a technical assistance program um, where we would like to allocate funds to hire uh, technical experts in a variety of fields to help small businesses with problems and questions that have come up since the, since the pandemic. Um, we, we've had a lot of questions about SBA programs, um, teleworking, IT solutions, um, you know, how to build a better e-commerce platform, um, all kinds of different things. So that, that's what that program is intended for. 
the resolution um, does give the city manager the authority to move money between programs so that if we found that we had more demand for the cash incentive than we did for the loans, we could make adjustments in that way. Um, just a couple of other pieces of information about the program. We will be launching a website and an online tool for businesses to use to apply. Um, we hope to have that up and ready to accept applications next Monday, April 6th. Um, and um, we're developing frequently asked questions and, and instructions. We're also working on a media toolkit, um, different ways to get the message out, trying to find organizations throughout the city that can help us uh, communicate this to all parts of the city. So um, with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, and Kathy, how does that impact the Paycheck Protect Protection Program, if any? We, I don't, I don't know that it has any impact. So the 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 Fed federal government has rolled out a paycheck protection program. We are allowing businesses to apply for our program, even if they have applied for the other federal programs. So, um, I, as far as any financial impact, I don't know that we've completely waded through all of. There's only 440 pages of regulations. Um, but we're we're trying to sort all that out. But I don't know that there is any impact for businesses. Okay. Kathy, how about making a comment about the speed to get this program going and why it's important to expedite this as uh, fast as is appropriate? Yeah, I mean, obviously, many of our businesses uh, began closing on March 16th. Um, with the initial uh, declaration by the mayor, um, you know, many others were asked to close on March 24th. So we've we've seen a really big impact among, especially restaurants, uh, local retail, and then now personal services uh, kinds of employers. So um, we we are trying to get this out as quickly as possible in order to help give businesses um, some resources to help them to help tide them over until maybe some of the larger, more uh, robust federal programs are put into place. Um, but yeah, we, we are, we're trying to move very, very quickly and, and may have to come back and ask for amendments to the program. And we'll probably need to have a item on your agenda for the next few months to just give you an update and try to keep you up to date on how this program is going. Kathy, a question in that regard. Um, will you, will the staff have sufficient leeway though to administer the program and not wait for us in our regular meetings? Yes, um, the, the resolution gives the, the general manager and the city manager quite a bit of authority to set out the administrative procedures and policies that are going to be necessary to administer this. Just as a, a little bit more background on the loan program, we will be working with a local bank to underwrite and, and serve, service the loans. Um, we've had a, a local bank volunteer to, to do that for us for free. So um, we're, we're very appreciative of them stepping forward and, and doing that. We also have a local business that's helping us develop the, the online platform. So, um, yeah, that's, we think that we, and we will be developing a, a scoring, a set of scoring criteria for the applications because we do know that we will get more applications than we will have funding more than likely. So. Thank you. No additional question, but I just want to offer a word of thanks and gratitude to city leadership and staff for being this responsive within a matter of days and weeks, really, of even the first order uh, on March 16th. So thank you for that. If there are no other questions, I would move the item for approval. 
Second. We have a motion to approve and a second. Are there any comments or questions from any of the trustees? And again, hearing none, uh, Francis, if you would call the roll. Chairman McAtee? Yes. Vice Chair Hooper? Yes. Jim Roth? Yes. Todd Stone? Aye. Passes unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Next on our agenda is to receive a, a presentation on the Marcus Garvey Apartment Economic Development Project called Harmony Project. Kathy, would you brief us on that, please, ma'am? Um, yes, this item is um, a uh, project that is at the old Marcus Garvey School, which before it was called Marcus Garvey, it was called Harmony School. Um, it's located um, at uh, Northeast 24th Street. The school, the, the plan for the project is to build 40 units of multifamily housing. Um, it will be uh, senior and grandparent housing. Uh, I, is Norm Seberg on the call? Is he going to make a presentation today about I'm, this? I'm here. Do I need to do something? Pound six, star six. No, we can hear you. We can hear you, so you're not muted. Um, would you like to walk through some of the details of the project, Norm? Are you there? Can you hear me? I'm here. Yes. Okay. So is the time mine? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, I apologize. Well, I want to compliment whoever wrote the background piece on this. I learned a lot <laughs> and it makes me more excited to be part of the project. So uh, looking at the support, which I guess starts on page 32 of your packets, um, this is how I principally approach a, a project is to kind of understand how the site plan would work with the concept. So this is just the old school building itself. It will house 20 uh, rehab units and we are doing a historical rehab. So it will be historically correct. Um, and it will house, there will be 20 uh, apartments inside the school building. The auditorium will retain for not only auditorium, but probably a fitness center and demonstration kitchen. And then the other area I whited out so I could kind of do a site plan. We'll be doing 20 new construction units. And as Kathy said, this is, it's it's a, it's classified as a senior project, but under this type of classification for the IRS, it's there only needs to be one person who's 55 or over in the unit, so that leaves room for for grandchildren or older's people. It, it, it's it can be largely a mixed generation. So in, in working through what the demographic of the area was was like we settled on this as something that would answer the needs of the of the area so i take this drawing and i kind of pencil in what i think it would look like but fortunately if you'll turn the page and look at 33 this is what professionals have done with my concept so it looks a lot better and <clears throat> we're retaining the the old school building there you show the construction of the new units uh, and the complexes we have a community garden, um, and we also have a community building, which will be new construction, which will house additional services for the residents. And uh, anytime you have a question, just break in. It's, they might come up as I go through these, but I'll go through them pretty quick. Okay. So looking at page 34, we have the architect just kind of give us a basic layout. And this is how the ground floor of the old school building will look when it's built out. Uh, the historic preservation principles uh, require that we preserve the corridors, doorways, anything of historical significance, uh, facades, windows, things of that nature. So all work will be done uh, with an eye to retaining those uh, historic mm -hmm. elements and really presenting the building as it appeared new, 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 new after it was constructed. 
So the next page, 35, is just the second floor. It will be one and two bedroom units. And then page 36 is really a representation of a typical two bedroom unit, which will be the new construction aspect. And page 37 is a typical three bedroom unit. So in summarizing, you know, the benefits to the community uh, of the project, I have kind of a, I've broken down the budget into very rudimentary line items. But basically the, the budget as it stands is a $9,115,000 budget. And it'll be used to purchase the property, do the renovation and, and build a new construction. There's a $200,000 plus budget for landscaping in there. So we want to pay a particular attention. Uh, you know, Okura has got helping us this five acres of, of land that comes with this building. And we want to make the best use of it and make it attractive to the community. So all the units will be targeted to people or families at or below 60 degree, 60% 60 of area median income. 40% uh, will be added below 50% of area median income. And, you know, these things, they call it affordable housing, but it's not really affordable, which is why we're making the request. We, we need to access different levels of finance for this, uh, low-income housing tax credits, state low-income housing tax credits. Uh, with your blessing, the the bond fund proceeds and some of the TIF proceeds. But I think it'll be well worth it when it's uh, finished. We've been in contact with several area uh, leaders and, and business people and pastors, and, and we're all excited about this. Uh, we fielded their input and we feel the project represents the desires of the community and we can do a good job of that. So really appreciate the opportunity to present this. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I, this is Kathy. I would just like to add a couple yep. of, of things to this. First of all, and Mr. Seberg mentioned this briefly, the building is, the property is currently owned by the Oklahoma City Urban Renewal Authority. We issued a request for proposals to identify a developer to redevelop the, the project and um, Norm and his group were selected. Um, their request today is for a $200,000 allocation for a, of tax increment financing dollars from the Northeast Renaissance TIF and a million dollars um, in um, allocation of the affordable housing fund that's a part of the general obligation limited tax bond proceeds. So um, they will be using state 9% affordable housing tax credits, state and federal historic tax credits, and then the state also has a, 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 an affordable housing tax credit that Oklahoma County is now able to use. So um, they're, they're putting a lot of resources into making this building into a great adaptive reuse. What kind of a timeline, Kathy, does the project have? Um, well, they they have made application to o OFA, the Oklahoma Housing Finance Authority, for the nine percent state. Of, I mean, the nine percent of federal affordable housing tax credit. So once they know about that award, I believe it's in June or July, they can begin work on the project in earnest. But we needed to get all of these approvals in place first in order for them to qualify for the state. Um, affordable housing tax credits. Questions or comments from anyone? I'll move approval of the item. We have a motion second. to approve. And a second. Any comments or questions? Seeing none. Call the roll, if you would, Madam. Chairman McAtee. Yes. Vice Chair Hooper. Yes. Jim Roth. Yes. Todd Stone. Aye. It was approved unanimously. 
Thank you all. Thank Next you very up much. Is a, thank you for your coming down on a day like this. Uh, next up is pleasure. a presentation from the Myriad Gardens Crystal Bridge Project. So this okay. item is a presentation by um, the Myriad Gardens Foundation and author is a, a request for staff, requesting staff to draft a memorandum of agreement with the Myriad Gardens Foundation uh, for the allocation of tax increment financing that was approved by city council. The amount of tax increment financing that was approved was roughly roughly six million dollars, five million dollars from the, the downtown TIF and um, about nine hundred and sixty thousand from TIF eight, which is the Devon headquarters TIF. Maureen Heffernan, it, it should be on the phone and able to make a presentation about this project. Maureen? Uh, yes, I'm here. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, I'll just uh, briefly run through this presentation. I'm, I'm assuming you can see the, the images as I talk about them. So the Crystal Bridge turned 32 this month, and it was built even a few years before that. So we're at a point in its life cycle that it really needs some major investment in the interior to bring it up to a level that can make it a much stronger attraction for, for the city and for us to attract more visitors and really help us be even more financially sustainable for the next generation. Um, there's some images here that we thought would be fun to see from uh, the very early years. This was before it opened, actually, in 1988. You can see that, again, it's, it's at least a generation old and, and needing some um, investment to keep it strong. Um, when the Devon TIF money was able to renovate the exterior of Myriad Gardens um, almost nine years ago, that made a tremendous impact in how, uh, how much better the Myriad Gardens has been for the, for the city. And the last missing puzzle piece to make this a truly world-class uh, attraction and cultural gem is to invest in the Crystal Bridge the interior really hasn't changed much at all from when it was first opened, um, you know, over 32 years ago. So why we need this, this renovation uh, now is to update the aging infrastructure. You'll see some images that show why it, it needs that. We really have a chance to improve the aesthetic and the educational aspects to, for the visitor experience. We want to take advantage of the convention center, the new park, the hotel, and they'll be expecting a really high level of what a cultural institution should have and, and the level of their um, collections, how they should be presented in the education and so on. We really want to en enhance the accessibility for seniors and others with special needs. Right now, it's a little too challenging for some of these populations and we really wanted to uh, improve that. And as I mentioned, this gives us a wonderful opportunity to have more visitors, um, to sell more memberships, which reduces the city's share of the maintenance it takes to uh, operate the gardens every year. So that's for our long-term financial su sustainability and to reduce the city's share of the operating management fee every year. So the next image here shows what this will cover. So we, we have this down as three phases, and phase one was completed. Um, that helped us renovate our south lobby, add a beautiful new classroom to the first level. And now the second phase helps us completely redo the interior of the Crystal Bridge and also fix up our north lobby to make that uh, program space. Phase three would be to do the sections in brown, uh, um, shading on the west terrace, and also doing our uh, south lobby entrance to make that a much better entrance um, to the gardens on the south end. So you can see the, the, uh, renovate, the renovation of the lobby, which has turned out quite beautiful, our new classroom, a new conservatory entrance. That was all completed um, a year and a half ago. And then here is our Crystal Bridge view again. It really hasn't changed much since it first opened. Um, we have a beautiful plant collection. We have a 
really wonderful curator who has really turned the bridge around in the last eight years. And the plant collections are are just beautiful. And then if we can renovate it and adding collections back in, it's going to be an incredible, incredible attraction for residents and, and all of the visitors that will be increasing to the downtown. It's great for education, the, the collections of flowers and edibles. It's just great for kids to learn about all that in all ages. So on to some of the photos that show why we need to really improve this. So you can see um, it's not very beautiful, the railing. Uh, the waterfall was planned, unfortunately, that it, it's just wet and a little slippery. It, it gets mold quick, uh, mold grows there, and it just doesn't look good. It really needs a facelift. Um, some of these old dated um, finishes and features you can see here. You can see these old bridges are kind of rotting, and they look they look a little homemade. They really need to be of a much enhanced um, appeal and look for our visitors. And you can see the uneven surfaces are hard for wheelchairs. Um, we call this kind of the bridge to nowhere. It kind of blocks at the old entrance. Um, so it, it just needs to be really thought through. Uh, this elevator shot that I'm on now, you can see how there's a lot of rust that's happening and different support structures. It's a humid environment, and so rust can be a problem after 35 years. Uh, you see a lot of uneven surfacing, outdated of these bricks, again, that we want to fix all that and make it look much, much more up-to-date. Um, these kind of paths here you see, this, this mulch path, again, it's, an, it's not a very sophisticated look, just to put it mildly. Um, old entrances that kind of lead into these dark corners uh, really need to be changed and, and, and improved. Um, so there's just some pictures there you can see, you know, at, to visitors, this is not really something you want them to experience, the, the way some of those dark corners look now. Even some of the way the planting beds were, were planned out, uh, they're very narrow. And so they, they're, they really limit us in how we can show off plants and what we can grow, especially in our, our desert section. Um, the next image you see, we, we call it our Oculus room. And it's, it's just a big, bare, concrete room right now. And we have a wonderful plan of how to make that uh, into a visitor experience for uh, learning more about the collections and all the plants they've seen. So we can turn some empty space that's right now really not looking good, it's poorly used, into something really special. Uh, you can see stairways that kind of lead down to only staff areas, and we, we can get rid of those or mask them so the visitors don't see that behind the house. And I think the next picture is probably the most compelling is that there's just, there's just an aging infrastructure. So there's a lot of metal supports underneath the displays you see in the Crystal Bridge that really have to get replaced or, or certainly strengthened. Um, the next image is of our North Lobby. Again, you can see a very dated look on the walls. When they, when they designed it, you, this is coming from the North Lobby you literally hit a wall when you come into the bridge. So we really need to change that into a much better entry experience than kind of literally hitting the cement wall when you walk in, um, which looks like that. Um, we also hope to um, improve the Wayfair sign, the Wayfair, the, the Wayfair signs for people, especially again, coming from the South where all this development is, and attract all these tens of thousands of people will be at the convention center, the hotel, the park, to know that this is an attraction. And also, we, um, if, if we have the funds, where we, we want to also slip this into phase one to improve our, our south entrance as well. So people are really drawn to visit the botanical gardens from the south. Um, the next few slides, we're still working on the designs. They're, they're in flux right now, but this is just to show you a little bit of some ideas that we may do to make the space more interesting, more beautiful, um, uh, a, an all over better visitor experience. Uh, we'd like to have a new waterfall and make it much more um, beautiful and, and pleasing, new staircases, new flooring, 
new lighting, different types of pavers throughout the, the, um, the first floor, the ability to have beds where we can change out flower color easily and more often. So visitors always have these stunning, um, colorful views. Uh, adding sculpture, adding new, new bridge features, um, hopefully adding a new water feature into the first floor that would be really beautiful and unique. Um, and also adding really up-to-date educational signage, interactive exhibits, and new school programs. We have thousands of kids now that come through the bridge every year, and we can make this a much stronger educational experience for them with this new investment. So these are some uh, examples of what we might have out in different feature areas that we don't have now, these really meaningful educational experiences, interactive carts that schools and the public can use, We'd like to build a new terrace on the second level of the Crystal Bridge, which we can have events, classes, um, wedding ceremonies for earned revenue. This would be a beautiful spot for that. Uh, new things on our Skywatch, Skywalk that make it more engaging. Um, this is that Oculus room, that, that cement room. We, would, we have some ideas to add sound and light um, as you sit there and look out, enjoy the views to the north. Uh, we want to add a gift shop, and that would be something visitors uh, really would enjoy. And, of course, that increases our earned revenue to the garden for our long-term uh, financial stability as well. We've got a, a truly top, top team of people working on this. So we are going to make sure that the results are just stunning and that the community is really proud of it and that people want to visit, visit often, become members. Uh, it's a selling point for the uh, convention people to use that they've got this great attraction, really just steps from the new convention center. So the budget overview, as Kathy was saying, what we want to do, um, our cost estimate today is about $8.6 million. And so the, the Dev and TIF money and the extra city money is really key. We had a major gift from a local foundation we'll be announcing soon of $2.5 million. And that's going to be helping. And we're also, we continue to, to privately fundraise to add to this total so we can add even more features um, if we have the funds. And we do want to keep it when this is renovated. And we hope that we start construction late this year, that we, we finish our construction documents in the fall. We could start construction as early as December. And then we would be... Um, constructing it, planting it, and, and our plan would be to have grand opening in early spring, probably March of 2022. And we really want to keep it very affordable as a result of the city investment in it. So we'd really like to keep it very affordable um, so everyone in the community can um, visit and enjoy it. So that, that is our project summary, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for Maureen? Action from the trust. Like to move the item. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Yep. Hearing none, Madam Secretary, if you would call the roll. Chairman McAtee? Yes. Vice Chair Hooper? Yes. Jim Roth? Yes. Todd Stone? Aye. Uh, motion passes uh, unanimously. Thank you, Francis. Next on the agenda is the uh, general manager reports. And uh, we don't need any action on that. Is that right, Francis? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's item E uh, left under the individual. Okay, the Oklahoma that's right. Oklahoma the City Economic Development Foundation fiscal year second quarter. Yes, and I believe Jeff Seymour is available to give a brief presentation. Very good. Well, good afternoon, members of the trust. Can you guys hear me okay? 
Yes. Can hear. Yes, sir. Yes. yes. Okay, good. Well, well, I'm going to keep the presentation really short. I'm not going to walk through all the slides that I sent you. I think the biggest thing that I just wanted to say was, um, obviously, we continue to appreciate the partnership on many levels with working through economic development, no matter what the conditions. Um, it's been a good partnership to to think about the small business program, but also big picture things coming our direction and trying to, you know, obviously think about what's happening right now, but also uh, preparation for what uh, opportunities we need to chase in the in the future. As it relates to the report, um, that document's really a summary of 2019 activity. Um, shows you we had a really solid year in 2019. Um, wasn't quite as uh, as uh, robust as 2018, but I think we all were expecting that. Um, good projects, good wins, um, and uh, a lot of a lot of good momentum on many fronts. Um, the comments that I wanted to kind of sum up with, and I think these stand no matter what the conditions are. That you know, when we look into our future, particularly in our partnership with the city through the trust, there are some really big picture things that we have to continue to lean in on. One is talent, having the right talent, whether that's helping people make adjustments to skill sets and be realigned to a new economic reality, um, or preparing for uh, talent needs with continued high demands, like our aerospace autonomy. Um, we've talked internally at our shop about our framework for talent, and I wanted to kind of give you guys a peek behind that tent. That's those, those, the, the Oklahoma City on-ramp slides that you see. And we also... Um, know that being an innovation innovation uh, economy is going to continue to drive us forward moving forward. That's going to affect our ability to have more robust and diverse opportunities, but also to continue to adjust on the fly as, as situations like the one we're in the middle of uh, come our way. So I, I'm happy to answer any questions, but on on a high level, at a high level, I just want to say again, thanks for the partnership. We uh, we're good. To, we're excited to be part of the three-legged stool that attacks economic development on a regular basis in partnership with the city and the alliance. Thank you, sir. Comments or questions are from the trustees. Do we need a motion, uh, Francis, or do we just accept? Yes, sir, we need a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Chairman McAtee? Yes. yes. Vice Chair Hooper? Yes. Jim Roth? Yes. And Todd Stone. The Aye. motion was approved unanimously. Thank you, ma'am. Now we get to where I thought we were last time, but to, for the general manager reports. Uh, and we do not need action on those. Is that correct, Francis? Correct. And Any comments or I, questions from the trustee? Yes, ma'am. I don't have anything to add to the general manager's report. <clears throat> Thank you, Kathy. Any citizen wishing to be heard? Any staff comments? And any trustee comments? Hearing none, thank you for coming. God bless you. May we have a safe trip and a, a profitable time as we move forward during these difficult times. Thank you for coming. We are adjourned.